What is up everybody? Real quick before the video starts, I would just like to say thank you once again. Past couple days this channel's been blowing up with some views and I've been getting subscribers left and right. I haven't been able to keep track of it. Last night when I went to bed we were at like 375 subscribers or somewhere around there. And I did not expect to come home today and find 450 subscribers. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for subscribing and for all the support lately. And if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. There's tons of content on the way and it would mean so much to me if you could. And if you're not sure yet, go ahead and watch this video and then hit subscribe at the end. It would mean a lot to me. Anyways, thank you guys so much again. Let's get started with the video, shall we? How's it going everybody? Too Spooky here and welcome back to another fact video. Today we're going to be counting down 50 facts about alternative rock band Brand New. Number 1. Brand New is an alternative rock band from Long Island, New York. They were formed in the year 2000 and the band currently consists of vocalist, guitarist, and lyricist Jesse Lacey, guitarist, vocalist, and lyricist Vincent Accardi, bassist Garrett Tierney, and drummer Brian Lane. Number 2. In the late 1990s, Jesse Lacey, Garrett Tierney, and Brian Lane were all members of the band The Rookie Lot. They eventually split off from the members of the group, and in 2000, they formed what we know today as Brand New. Number 3. Before starting The Rookie Lot with bassist Garrett Tierney and drummer Brian Lane, Brand New lead singer and guitarist Jesse Lacey played bass and sang backing vocals for Taking Back Sunday. Two of the more prominent songs that Lacey is featured on is Go On and Summer Stars, both of which can be found on Taking Back Sunday's self-titled album. Number 4. Several of the songs on Brand New's 2006 album, The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me, contain references to pop culture. For example, the title of the song Sewing Season was taken from Stephen King's novel Secret Window, Secret Garden. Number 5. The title of the brand new song, Fork and Knife, was taken from Fork and Knife, a restaurant located along the train tracks in Long Island. The title was suggested by lead guitarist Vincent Accardi, who hails from Long Island. Number 6. In the video for brand new song, Sick Transit Gloria, Glory Fades, a silhouette figure can be seen in the final shot. Many fans believed that this figure was Thursday lead singer, Geoff Rickley, as it is widely known that the two bands are pretty good friends, and that Thursday is from nearby New Jersey. However, the figure is actually Justin Beck, guitarist from metal band Glassjaw. Number 7. During the summer of 2009, Brand New went into the studio to rework many of their old songs into new versions. Their label Interscope was excited and released a video for the new stripped down version of the brand new hit song, Sewing Season. However, the band was not thrilled by this move, and after several more videos, Brand New expressed disappointment with Interscope's strategy number 8. Brand New lead singer Jesse Lacey has given various accounts of the song Degosser at concerts. He sometimes says, this song is about magnets, and explaining what a degosser actually does. He has also said, this song is about DeLoreans, and this song is about the beginning of the end of the world. Number 9. Lead singer Jesse Lacey wrote Guernica about his grandfather, who was dying of cancer. The song is about how shocked and lost he felt upon hearing the news. Number 10. Jesse Lacey wrote, I will play my game beneath the spin light after an extended period of excessive touring without rest. He and his bandmates were growing tired of their schedule and were becoming very homesick. Number 11. Jude Law and the Semester Abroad is about a cheating girlfriend. The lyrics indicate that a girl fell for a good-looking guy on a trip to Europe, and the singer feels a great degree of spite towards her, but also feels he is over her. Number 12. Limousine is about the death of 7-year-old Katie Flynn. Hours before her death, Katie was the flower girl at her aunt's wedding, spreading petals down the aisle. As they left the wedding, they all got into a limousine and headed home. Martin Heedgen, who was 25, had had at least 14 drinks that night and his blood alcohol content was 0.28, which was three times more than the legal limit in New York, which was 0.08. He drove more than two miles north in the southbound lane containing the Flynn family. Both the driver of the limousine, Stanley Rabinowitz, and Katie were killed instantly. Katie was decapitated and her mother held her head as rescue workers helped the rest of the family out of the vehicle. 
That is a pretty morbid story for a song. Number 13. Lead singer Jesse Lacey got the idea for Luca from thinking about a gang. The lyrics talk about how they needed to kill a member of the gang by cementing his feet and throwing him in the lake. Number 14. Lead singer Jesse Lacey wrote magazines in tribute to a Victoria's Secret model named Laetitia. Number 15. Me vs. Madonna vs. Elvis is about lead singer Jesse Lacey's fear that he will one day burn out or fall from grace. Number 16. Mixtape is about a book called The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The book's main character, named Charlie, is dating a girl named Mary Elizabeth, who has a lot of tattoos and piercings. Charlie has a way of telling people how he feels about them by making them a mixtape, usually with songs by the Smiths, who are his favorite band. Number 17. Play Crack the Sky is on the surface about a shipwreck. The shipwreck is a metaphor for a doomed relationship, and it talks about a love going wrong despite desperate tries to make it right, and in the end, falling short. Number 18. Brand New debuted the song Sealed to Me at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles on April 15th, 2015. The band passed out a lyric sheet for the new track at the merch table before playing the song during their encore. Before debuting the tune, frontman Jesse Lacey explained the story behind its conception. He said, We've been writing music, and sometimes it's real hard to write songs. It takes forever. You just kind of sit around and think about it, and you try it out and it doesn't work, he explained. We're a real mess like that. That's why it takes us so long to write music. But sometimes, you're just sitting around watching TV or doing nothing, and you've got a guitar and you start playing a song and it just kind of happens. This song kind of happened like that, Lacey says. Number 19. 70 times 7 was written about a falling out between best friends. Lead singer Jesse Lacey had been best friends with, then, Taking Back Sunday's guitarist singer John Nolan, who has left the band since then, since grade school. Lacey's girlfriend at the time cheated on him with Nolan. John called Jesse, and in the last words that Jesse spoke to him were, You're as subtle as a brick on the small of my back, so let's end this call and end this conversation, and hung up. That was the last time they spoke, and then years later, Brand New added it as lyrics to their song 70 Times 7 which is about what happened and his feeling towards Nolan. Taking Back Sunday then came out with a song, There's No I in Team, which expresses John's side of the story. In There's No I in Team, he says, What I can't regret, can't you just forget, which shows how he wants to get past what happened between them. Number 20. Sick Transit Gloria, Glory Fades, is about a guy and a girl who decide to take their relationship to the next level. But when it comes down to it, the guy isn't sure if he's ready, and thinks they should just hold each other instead. In the end, he gives in to her wishes, and does it. Number 21. Jesse Lacey wrote The Boy Who Blocked His Own Shot as an apology to a girl he dumped for no reason. Number 22. The Quiet Things That No One Ever Knows is a story about a young couple who decide to get married at a young age. As soon as things get serious, the burning lust that was once in the couple was already burning out. But by then it was too late to go back and they already had kids on the way. The protagonist is now regretting the opportunities in life that he lost by settling down too early and he blames his wife and kids. The quiet things are all these regrets that he has but can't tell anyone about. Number 23. Most brand new songs are written on acoustic guitars but later converted over to electric. Number 24. Your Favorite Weapon was released on October 9th, 2001. Number 25. Deja Entendu was released on June 17th, 2003. Number 26, The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me was released on November 20th, 2006. Number 27, Daisy was released on September 22nd, 2009. Number 28, On December 2nd, 2015, the band made their leaked demos 2006 available for the first time releasing it on a limited edition red cassette tape with a digital download card included. Number 29. The band allowed their performances at Laza Palooza in Berlin on September 13th, 2015, and Austin City Limits in Austin, Texas on October 3rd, 2015 to be broadcast. This marks the first time the band have allowed their performance to be broadcast, with Lacey previously stating that the band were not comfortable recording their live sets. Number 30. As part of Record Store Day 2015, the band released their second album, Deja and Tendu, as a limited vinyl. Accompanied by Pogolith 00, a booklet containing the lyrics to the album, a standard edition, non-limited vinyl, has been made available on May 5th, 2015. 
Both Pogolift 000 and Pogolift 00 were later made available at shows and through the band's online store. Number 31. On November 21st, 2011, the band reissued their debut album, Your Favorite Weapon, with new artwork and bonus tracks. Number 32. In March 2008, Brand New started their own record label named Procrastinate Music Traders. The first act signed to the new label was longtime friend Kevin Devine. The first release from the label was a reissue of the 2006 Kevin Devine album, Put Your Ghost to Rest, in April of 2008. Number 33. The shower scene is a reference to actress Janet Leigh's story in the film Psycho. Number 34. Failure by Design is about Lacey experiencing writer's block. Number 35. Soko Amarento Lime was written for Lacey's friend Peter and about Lacey's girlfriend. Number 36. Your favorite weapon was re-recorded when the original recording was lost on a computer's hard drive. Number 37. All of the songs on the band's demo were re-recorded for your favorite weapon. Number 38. The band later admitted that they did not like the overall sound of the album, Your Favorite Weapon. Number 39. Tautu references the lead actress, Audrey Tautu, in the movie, Amelia. Number 40. Okay, I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't, is a line from Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Number 41. The Holiday EP. This free limited edition album was released on December 15th, 2003 and made exclusively available to members of the brand new street team. Only 1,000 copies were pressed and it has become extremely rare. Number 42. The album cover of The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me is a picture titled Untitled 44 from Nicholas Pryor's Age of Man collection which the band saw at an art show in New York. Number 43. The name of the album, The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me, came from a conversation Jesse Lacey had with a friend regarding Daniel Johnston, a musician who suffers from schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Number 44. Throughout the writing and recording of The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me, Jesse Lacey, Vincent Accardi, Garrett Teenery, Brian Lane, and Derek Shearman were each plagued with death and illness amongst their families and friends. Lacey recalled that each of them had become a little too comfortable with the idea of a funeral. Number 45. Good Man was written by Lacey about being in love when you're young and out of it when you're old. Number 46. Missing You was written by Lacey about his grandfather a year after his death. Number 47. Brother's Song is from how Lacey had been influenced by the writing style of his friend Kevin Devine and looked to try writing about current world events. Number 48. Brother's Song deals with Lacey's fear that one of his brothers would have to go to war, remarking that neither he or his family would let it happen. Number 49. Brand new's musical influences include The Foo Fighters, Weezer, The Beach Boys, The Smiths, and The Cars. And finally, number 50. It was officially announced through the band's website on June 19th, 2014 that the band had been writing and recording new material, as well as building their own studio. And there you have it everybody, 50 facts about brand new. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite brand new song is, and let me know what band you'd like to learn 50 facts about next. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, it would mean so much if you could, and then you can be notified about future videos as they come out. Well thanks again for watching everybody, and I will see you next time.